this it still kicks ass. Hey guys, so this is my hey guys, this is my bucket review for No Country for Old Men. I actually really like this steel book I found. Now, would you believe it that I actually bought this before I even had a Blu-ray? I bought this back off of Amazon back in 2012. I thought it was a Blu-ray DVD mix because I was still one of those people like, Boo, I'm Blu-ray, like a twat. Yesterday was the first time I've watched it on this format. That's a four-year-old purchase. Either way, No Country for Old Men is an amazing standout film by the uh, Coen brothers. Amazingly well shot by Roger Deakins, of course, who was nominated for that film and the assassination of, of uh, Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. And he was nominated twice in the same year, and he still didn't win Best Photography, which is ridiculous. No Country for Old Men is about Josh Brolin, who comes across as money of this Mexican drug deal gone wrong and he sees this opportunity and he takes the money. He is then being followed by Javier Bardem who is this psychopath hitman who has an extremely strict and twisted set of principles and the whole film is a cat and mouse chase between these two all the while Tommy Lee Jones is basically a man out of his element as the sheriff who is trying to follow the situation. No Country for Old Men still stands up today. I still remember watching it in theaters and thinking, wow, this is an amazing movie. The film is very quiet in terms of score. I barely recognize any music throughout this movie. If you do hear it, point it out to me because I only hear it for sure at the end. That's something that I thought was very interesting about this film is the rule aspect of it. The Coen brothers have always been known for doing more so sort of dark comedies. Like the darkest they went and the most serious they went was Fargo. This film goes well beyond the seriousness of Fargo. And it is one of the most intense dark films I have ever seen. And the thing that I liked about this film the most is the characters themselves. Josh Brolin is a guy who comes across a big pile of money and he goes, mm, yeah, mm. and then he walks off nonchalantly. And we, every time we see him in bed, we see him having a conversation with himself, and we always he vis, he vocally says the ending of that conversation. And that's what I liked about every time that they did that. I was like, oh, so we're seeing him at the very end of a conversation within his head. And of course, Javier Bardem is amazing in this movie. His performance in this role is memorable beyond meaning. His character is dark and scary and oddly humorous. The scene with the coin. Who does not remember the scene with the coin toss? It's a scene that kind of comes out of nowhere because he's literally just stopping by at this gas station. I remember holding my breath watching this scene because of how intense it was and how <laughs> his dialogue, like this coin has been coming to you for ever since 1958 and your whole life has been leading up to this coin. So call it and never thought a coin toss would be so scary. Like, you know, we see it from Two-Face, right? With him with the coin toss? No, no, I'll admit, Javier Bardem's got the scariest coin toss scene I've ever seen. <laughs> and then Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones is a man who's out of his element. He even talks about the, the beginning of the film about how he uh, looks up to the sheriffs who used to be confident enough to walk without a gun. And that's something that he feels that he's an old timer. He's out of his element now. And we watch him as this new sort of crime wave is taking over. And then everyone else in this film too. Woody Harrelson's really good in it. Uh, Kelly McDonald is fr really funny as uh, I liked her character as Josh Brolin's wife. The film itself plays out so well. Every moment of the film, we are watching a new aspect of the character. Something that I've heard be said is uh, visually show your characters. Don't explain them. Don't have them explain themselves. And that's what this film does. Every time we go to a new location, we're finding out something different about their characters. We see that Josh Brolin is a thinking man with how he hides the money, with how he sets himself up. We also see that Javier Bardem is very intricate with his job. When he goes into the room, he when he's uh, before he goes into the room that he believes Josh Brolin is in with the money, he 
practices going into his room by opening and closing the door with the light. There's a lot of these little elements in this film that add up to the big picture. And of course there's the ending where Josh Brolin gets killed off screen, which a lot of people, including me, were quite pissed off about. But that's the thing that this film is showing, is that the good guy doesn't win. And that in this scenario, that's what the point of the story is, is that evil triumphs over good. And even though you would think that what his intentions are right, he oversteps himself. And I enjoy the ending, the very end as well, with Javier Bardem meeting with his wife and how that ambiguity of how you don't know what happened and you kind of have an idea of what happened, but you don't, you're don't, you not really sure. And then Tommy Lee Jones with his dream of basically him being out maneuvered, him basically not being able to keep up with the light. So in the end, I'm obviously gonna give No Country for Old Men a seven out of seven. It's an amazing film. I very much enjoy it. I love looking up fan posters for this film. It's one I came across on Pinterest. It's one of the floor when he kills, when Javier Bardem kills the cop with his with the cuffs there's a poster of the title at the bottom and the majority of it is the floor with all the street the street marks on it and the shoes are at the top of the of the uh, poster anyway guys that's all for me i hope you enjoyed this review uh oh yeah we got to do the bucket at this rate probably in 20 years maybe i'll be able to finish all of my movies i have to add more because i actually have gotten a few more movies so Ooh, a nolan movie uh, I'm going to be doing The Prestige next. I'm looking forward to that because it's actually, I just saw it recently. So there we go. Oh, crap.